Hey saddle hunters, welcome back to the channel. I have been looking forward to doing this video for a long time. This is gonna be a video that I think brand new people will really benefit from, but it's also one that if you've been around the block for a long time, maybe you'll get a tip or a trick here about how to set up with a tree saddle. So in this video, I'm gonna talk through all about how I set up and why I set up. There's a lot of reasons as to, to why I, I sit. Why do I use three bow hangers? Why do I use a platform and steps? How do I like to position around the tree? What kind of tether do I like to use? What kind of a gear hanger do I use? How do I hang my backpack? There's just tons of different questions that come up when you're talking about how to set up in the tree with a tree saddle. And so my goal today is to show you how I do that, how I set up in the tree with a tree saddle. We're gonna start off with from what Lyman belt I'm using this year to how I hang my platform and go through the whole process to talk about how I position around the tree for shots. So I hope this video is helpful to you and I hope that you guys have a great and successful season this fall. Let's jump into it here. All right, so I'm set up on the tree here as if I was climbing. This year I've gone to an Amsteel Lyman belt for a couple different reasons. Number one, I, I wanted something that was compact enough to fit in my burr pouches here on my Dryad Mini Dre. But second, I started climbing with a tether this year for a little bit of extra security. So the Lyman belt is really just nothing but a positioning aid for me. And so I feel comfortable using the Amsteel in this application. That's not a suggestion. I'm just explaining to you what I'm doing. Uh, but once I'm at this point, let's say this is where I want to hang my platform. I'm just going to reach behind me and I'm going to pull my platform off my platform hanger. I get those from Genesis 3D Printing. They're, they're a fantastic little tool. And I'm going to unwrap my strap here. And at the top of my platform, you can see I have a Night Eyes gear tie. I just put a hook on that and I hang it temporarily from my lineman's belt. Just wrap it around there. And it's just gonna, just gonna hang right there, which is perfect because then I can have hands-free operation. So it's gonna hang there, feed my strap around, get the platform positioned where I want it. Now, one thing to mention right here is that I like to set up so that most of my anticipated deer movement is gonna kind of be between nine and 11 o'clock. That way I can shoot with the tree as a barrier between me and the deer. That's one of the major advantages to, to saddle hunting in my opinion. And if you're giving that up, I think you're, you're really missing out. So I'm just gonna set my platform, depending on what attachment method you're using, your uh, mileage on this step is going to vary. I get my platform set, I undo the strap, tighten it up as tight as I can, and then I seat it and I cam it over. This is a pine, so there's tons of loose bark. So, all right, so now that my platform's on the tree, the next thing I'm gonna do is complement it with a ring of steps. Now, I often just carry in an over-center buckle with three steps on it. This way, I can get the best of both worlds. I like the ability to stand up on the platform, but I also like the ability to shoot 360 degrees using the tree as cover. I can shoot 360 degrees with a platform, but I feel like it's a little more clunky. So now I'm just gonna set my ring of steps I like to set them just slightly higher than my, my platform. So I'm gonna go underneath the post. You probably could go over, but I've always just gone under. I get a little tension on it, hold it in place, and then I position my steps. On a tree like this, I'm gonna go probably about 9.30 or 2.30, 9.30 and 12, just so that they're for the most part equally spaced around the tree. Then I'm gonna cam it over. Try to set them a little bit, but they'll get set the rest of the way when I step up. So now that I'm set up, I'm gonna stand up onto the tree I've already got my tether attached, but if you just climb with a lineman's belt, 
at this point, you're gonna wanna attach your tether. So let me just step up here, take my tension out. I like to, at this point, move my tether up to the height I'm gonna be using. I'm using the mini dre, and I find that it likes a low tether height, so I'm gonna set it just about shoulder, shoulder height when I'm standing straight up. Another thing to note here, when you set your tether on the tree, I like to set the eye on the opposite side of where I'm expecting to rotate around. So because I'm right-handed, I like to rotate around to the left. So I'm gonna keep my eye over here, and that way when I'm pulling around, I'm keeping tension against the eye the whole time. So I'm gonna kinda of just get that set. Before I get the dre out, I'm just gonna rotate around here and step onto my steps and seat them a little bit. Now on a pine, they're gonna set and slip around a lot more because the bark's slippery and you know, all that. So now that they're set a little bit, I'm gonna take my saddle out. Just lives in that little, little pouch. I just make sure that it's straight, like my buckle on the left there. Clip that into my main carabiner. Because this saddle is not connected to the harness, I have a second lower connection point to the harness. You may have noticed that. There's now a belt on the mini dre, which is, which is nice to hold it in place when you're adjusting. So now that that's on, I'm going to begin to switch my weight. So I'm gonna let a little bit of slack out of my lineman belt, move my saddle down to where I like it, start to sit down into the saddle, put the weight into the tether, then I'm gonna take my lineman belt off. Fold my lineman belt up. I put it in my little burr pouch. I position that burr pouch right in front of me so it's not underneath the saddle. All right, so now that I'm set up in the mini dre, you'll notice I have knee pads on because I am, I'm a sitter. So I like to sit with my knees right about that that is about perfect I typically fold the leading edge under on this saddle a little bit all right next thing I'm gonna do once I've got that kind of where I want it is put up my hanging strap I like to get situated so that I know what height I want my bow hanger strap so take my bow hanger strap usually I have it in a pack but right now I've got it in a pocket, I'm gonna take it out, hang it on the tree. I use three bow hangers on here and three gear hooks, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But I get that unraveled, spread some of these out. I keep the, the gear hanging hooks fairly close together. Usually for me, this goes just, just underneath my tether. And then I'll position my gear hooks by and large right in front of me for my range finder, my grunt call, or whatever it is I'm using. Bow hangers typically at about nine o'clock. And then I have two other bow hangers that I move around the backside of the tree and I just kind of evenly space them around the tree. Cinch it down as tight as I can get it. That looks good. Then I'm going to pull my bow up. I'm just using my daughter's bow for this demonstration. You'll get the idea though. So take my bow, hang it up on the immediate bow hanger. And that's my setup. If I had my pack, 
I have a little G-hook here on the end of this strap, and I would just loop it around the, the handle of my pack, hook it there, and I would hang it. And I typically hang it pretty low so that it doesn't get in my way if I need to, to shoot out to here. So that's my setup. I mean, like this, I'm just going to sit here. I do not lean hardly ever. I think it creates too much movement. Uh, I don't think a lot of guys can sit still when they lean. So I can just sit here like this for a three, four, five, six hour sit and not move a muscle other than my head. And I'm very still. I try to keep the tree between me and the anticipated deer movement so that I know, you know, where to, where to go, where to set up. Now, let's say a deer is coming. If they're coming over to my anticipated shot window between 9 and 11, all I have to do is rotate a little bit, pick my bow up off the hanger, grab it, and I can take those shots. I could shoot all the way behind me here like this if I needed to, something you know, cut off behind me. One of the things I'll mention is that, that when I've been positioned like this in the past, I've gotten picked off a lot. Um, the deer just seem to pick this up, which is why I like to hide behind the tree. But as you can see, I can rotate like that and shoot a long, long way. But what I like to you do is use the tree to, for cover. That's why I use the multiple bow hangers in the ring of steps. So let's say the deer is out in front of me and it looks like it's going to feed off this way and my shot opportunity is going to appear, appear out behind the camera here. What I'm going to do is keep my bow on the hanger. I'm going to move over and I'm going to put a step on this first, you know, ring, step on the ring of steps. Now from here, I can shoot out to 12 o'clock very easily, a little bit more movement, and I can shoot to, you know, probably, probably 1 o'clock, right? Now, let's say I wanted to go a little bit further around the tree. I always use some type of a tether that I can one hand adjust. So I need a little extra tether length when I'm going around the back side of the tree. So I just want to be able to reach up, push down on this thing, and give myself a little extra length. Now, I, I like didn't give myself enough rope on my second connection there. So anyway, I'm just going to let a little length out, and then I'm going to rotate around the tree. Now, I've got the tree straight between me and the camera. I can shoot now. 2 o'clock, very easily. 2, 2.30, you can see, and I've still got the tree primarily as a blocker. I can sit here just like this and then rotate out and take my shot with very, very minimal movement. Let's say I wanted to go even a little bit further. I'm going to let out a little more length, and I'm just going to keep moving around my ring of steps. Now I can shoot 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, you know, very, very easily. Let's say all the deer activity appeared behind my original location. This is where it's nice to be able to put these, ha these extra hangers on here. I don't want to be holding my bow for a long time as I'm waiting for a shot to materialize. So if I've moved around to this position, I can just use this second hanger and take the bow out of my hand. Let's say I'm going even further around the tree. It's a little bit harder move. I'm probably going to advance the bow first, and then I'm going to use my hand on the tree to get up on my ring of steps let out a little extra length and now I can I can just sit here like this if the deer came in behind me and I wasn't expecting it very comfortably I can just sit into the tree and just just hang out then the shots materializing I can pick up my bow boom 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 you know and I still have the tree as a barrier so this to me is just the ideal setup to have multiple bow hangers and a ring of steps so that I can get the bow out of my hand while I'm waiting for the shot to materialize and I can use the tree as cover and, and shoot 360 degrees. If I wanted to keep coming, I can let out a little more length and I can even shoot back this way if I wanted to. So tons and tons of options. It's very easy to maneuver on the steps you just don't want to let yourself go swinging, you know. You want to take slow, controlled movements as you're moving around the tree. 
Let me show you another shot. You know, I, I rotated around to shoot behind me, and then I went around the tree. I can also stand up, and this is why I like using the platform. If I want to stand up for a little while, stretch my legs, it's just much easier to do that on a platform. There's some guys that like to turn around on the platform, throw the tether over their shoulder to shoot behind them. You can do that very easily in this setup as well. So you can see, I'm just gonna take my bow off the holder. Tether's gonna go over the shoulder. Typically I add a little bit of length. Now I can stand here like I'm hunting out of a tree stand. And I can take all these shots. Now I find my window ends, you know, probably about, what would that be, seven, seven o'clock? My elbow just hits the tree. But from seven o'clock in through, you know, back to noon, I can very easily make those shots in this position. Not my favorite way to do it, but if you get yourself in a bind, it's nice to know that you've got that option. So by and large, guys, that's kind of how I, I set up at hunting height. I use knee pads because I move around the tree. A lot of guys will just use a cushion for their knees, but the cushion doesn't move with you. And so if I'm gonna be on the backside of a tree waiting for something to materialize for 20 or 30 minutes, I want some padding. So I am a knee pad guy just from a very practical perspective. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys that have thought about how do I set up in the tree? How do I position for a shot? All those kind of things. One other thing I would mention is just for you guys that are, are rifle hunters, you want to do the, basically the same thing. Set up with the tree between you and the deer. That way you can use it as a rest. So for example, let's just pretend this thing's, this thing's my rifle. I got it on my shoulder now. I'm just going to, you know, hold it against the tree. Rock solid rest. And I pivot around like this. And I can just keep coming. I can keep moving, you know, and I just keep the tree as a rest. Now, if you're trying to saddle hunt out of this thing and take a rifle shot like this over there, yeah, that's, that's pretty tough. So use the tree as a rest. The other thing you can do, if your shots materialize over here, you can put your elbow into your bridge and get a pretty solid, solid rest position. So. That's another reason I like 360 degree steps around the tree. I think it just offers you a super solid rest when you're hunting out of the saddle with a rifle. So anyway, I hope some of that was helpful and eye-opening to a lot of you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook or to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. But once again, guys, thanks for watching the Saddle Hunting Channel here on YouTube.